the grand withdrawal from Kherson begins as Russians pull their first lines of defense and start retreating from the region. At the same time, Russians already wasted thousands of soldiers trying to capture Bakhmut and they're not planning to stop. But after all, it might be a plan by Ukrainians to deplete the Russian forces as fast as possible, fighting for insignificant settlements. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and quickly look at the map changes and statistics for the month of November. And right here, we can see the changes in the front line in the east of Ukraine. The biggest event of November was obviously the liberation of Kherson region, which you can see right here. And then on this map we can see the changes in the southern eastern part of Ukraine, specifically in areas around Avdivka and Vuhlidar. Here we can see the overall map of Ukraine along with occupied territories as of November 1st, and then right here is the same map as of December 1st. And it is estimated that in November alone Ukrainian forces were able to liberate 3850 square kilometers of its own land and approximately 16.66% of the territory of Ukraine is still occupied by Russians. And then as you can see right here, it is estimated that 16,970 Russian soldiers have been eliminated in the previous month, which is an absolute record. Most of these soldiers have been terminated in the east, specifically in Bakhmut area, which just shows you how reckless and mindless and stupid the Russian military tactics can get. And we will talk about this unexplainable desire by Russians to capture Bakhmut, no matter the cost, a little bit later. Because right now, let's see a little bit of the most recent footage. And our first picture comes to us from capital of Russia, Moscow, where we can see that the social services install these benches in the underground parking lots. And then right here, also from the streets of Moscow, we can see that the loudspeakers are being installed. And I mean, I can only guess why. It looks like that they are preparing for something. And then the next picture, which is in fact is a satellite image, comes to us from Engels Airport, located in Saratov. And right here we can see Russian 295 and 2160 bombers, along with fuel carriers and boxes with ammunition. In addition to that, it has been reported that even more Russian ships were spotted in the Black Sea, allegedly collecting the intelligence data. Most likely the reason for these activities it is because Russia is preparing for another mass attack against Ukraine. But according to the Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom, the probability for this attack is extremely low because Russia is very low on its inventories of missiles. They also think that this attack will not have the same psychological effect as it used to be in the past. And then according to Natalia Guminyuk, she thinks that this attack will not happen at all. According to her, all these activities are just the psychological warfare of Russia against Ukrainian minds and morale. But in one way or another, whether these attacks will happen or not, just please be careful and exercise the common sense. We then even have this picture from the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, which urges people to use the flashlights on their phones to save their lives. And the reason for this, as they say, it is because most Ukrainian cities are completely dark at night and the drivers might simply not be able to see the pedestrians. So whenever you're walking along the road or especially when you're crossing the intersections, just please turn on the lights because don't assume that drivers will be able to see you. If you have ever been driving a car in the pitch black night or even during the regular night, you will understand what I mean. And then, speaking more about these mass attacks by Russians, according to the representative of the general staff of Ukraine, Oleksiy Hromov, in November alone Russia launched 239 missiles and 80 Shahid drones. And the air defense system of Ukraine was able to intercept 72% of these missiles and 80% of drones respectively. And then according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, the reason why Russia targets these infrastructure objects of Ukraine 
It is because these infrastructure objects, they help Ukrainians to eliminate Russians. I have no idea how residential buildings, maternity hospitals or electrical power plants help Ukrainians destroy Russians, but this is what he said. Alright, just a couple more photos and videos before we talk about crucial updates from the south. And first of all, right here, we can see that a search has been conducted in Kirill Mifodivsky monastery in the west of Ukraine. And as a result of this search, they were able to find the pro-Russian materials. And speaking about monasteries, one of the priests from Kiva Pechorskaya Lavra has been officially suspected by the security services of Ukraine that he was releasing pro-Russian propaganda during his church services. At the same time, one of the most famous survivalists, Bear Grylls, visited the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, to meet with President Zelensky. And the reaction of Russian media was that like, huh, look at this Zelensky, does he need classes how to survive our attacks? And finally, right here we can see the graveyard of Russian missiles, which were used to shell Kharkov alone. That's right, only one city, not entire Ukraine. And the reason why Ukrainians keep these missiles is to show them to the rest of the world as a proof of Russian war crimes. One day the International Tribunal will be prosecuting Russian military criminals. And I can't wait to make this video. And if you want to watch it together with me, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and send me a message and I will reply to you. Alright, and now let's talk about these absolutely incredible updates from the south. And first of all, both countries were engaged in artillery duels on the both sides of Dnipro river and at the same time, some sounds of combat activities were heard as well. At the same time, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainian forces crossed Dnipro river, landed on Kinburn Spit and are performing special operation. The original statement has been made by the head of Mikolaev region, Vitaly Kim, and for obvious reason, this operation is under informational silence. And most likely, because of this, Russians started withdrawing from Oleshki, which is, as you can see from this map, is pretty much the closest city on the other side of Dnipro river. And once again, if you remember from my previous episodes, I was already making the assumptions that as soon as Ukrainians can land on Kinburn Spit and start advancing to the east, this is when Russians will start retreating in advance. And so far, it looks like this is exactly what's about to happen very soon. At the same time, Russians once again shelled the right side of Dnipro river, most likely to cover their retreat. And reportedly, they were even evacuating important people from Nova Kachovka. And according to the Ukraine's intelligence, the biggest decrease in the number of Russian forces was along Holopristen Aleshki Highway. And they claim that Russians were simply trying to run through the woods. And here is a very important thing to keep in mind, because if you remember, Russians had three lines of defenses in Kherson. And it looks like that they decided to completely withdraw the entire first line of defense, which basically means in the nearest future we might see the grand retreat from Kherson region. In several minutes we will talk about Bakhmut. And speaking about this city, today I received a short documentary about the intense fighting inside Bakhmut. But for obvious reasons I cannot show it on YouTube, that's why I decided to upload some of today's footage to my Discord and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to see these prohibited photos and videos, the links will be down below. Alright, and now let's get back to the south, because according to this article, Russia holds a lot of its reserves in the north of Crimea. This information came to us once again from Oleksiy Hromov, and the main concentration of Russians is located around Jankoi region. According to his intelligence data, they have approximately 750 units of weapons and military equipment, and in case needed, they will be redeployed to Zaporozhye region, somewhere between Orkhiv and Tokmak. 
And speaking about Zaporozhye, today, once again, several explosions were heard in temporarily occupied Tokmak. And then according to this article, Russians started to withdraw even from some settlements in the Zaporozhye region. And the two settlements which have been mentioned for this withdrawal are Mikhailovka and Polohi. With their main directions to retreat will be to Melitopol and to Mariupol. So as you can see, just like in Kherson, Russian started slowly but surely moving further away from the front lines. All right, and before I talk about the reckless military tactics of Russians, specifically in Bakhmut, allow me to give you a quick overview about the situation in the East. And first of all, as you can see from this video, the city of Donetsk has been under attack this last night. And then right here, we can see the consequences of this shelling. At the same time, the fighting along Svatovy Krimin Road still goes on, and Ukrainians mainly push from the north, west and south of Kriminna. While reportedly, Russians attempted several attacks to the north of this region, but they were all repelled by Ukrainians. And then according to the Ministry of Defense of Russia, they were able to fully capture Kurdumivka, but as you can see from this map, it is not yet still 100% confirmed. Ukrainians also pushed Russians in the south of Andreevka, but unfortunately Russians were able to advance a little bit more to the north of this settlement. And then overall, Russians were relatively successful along the entire eastern front line next to Bakhmut. And even though there is an immense pressure by Russians next to this city, Ukrainians still hold their ground. As you already see it, there is not much combat activities anywhere across Ukraine except Bakhmut area. So the only logical question is why this city is so important to Russians. Because as I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, in November alone, Russia lost approximately almost 17,000 of its soldiers, and the majority of them were lost in the east. And Russia still keeps trying, and they keep sending reinforcements to this place every single week. It might even feel like that Bakhmut for them is like the very last city that needs to be captured in Ukraine. That is why they put everything they got to do it. According to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, the battle for Bakhmut, which started back in May, has been going on for more than six months. And since then, Russia was only able to advance just a few kilometers, which is definitely not justified by the number of soldiers which were eliminated. So, once again, why Russians think this city is so important? And well, one of the first potential reasons is that Evgeny Prigozhin, the leader of Wagner Group, is personally responsible for this region. He was probably promised a huge financial reward, and the only condition that he received is to do it no matter what it takes. And at the same time, it allows Prigozhin to demonstrate his power and influence and make Putin feel a huge dependability on his persona. But I mean, okay, let's look at this city from the Russian perspective, which is, yes, it is located on the intersection of some major roads in the east. And then, so what? Do you think if they will be able to capture it, will Russians immediately win in the entire East? The answer is obviously no. They can barely advance in any direction as it is, and I mean, who told you that as soon as Russians take Bakhmut, Ukrainians will not to try to take it back? In some way, according to the Ukraine's intelligence, this is a relatively good thing for Ukraine for whatever is happening in Bakhmut. Because Ukraine has been able to hold their ground for several months and they intend to continue doing so. And for Russians, Bakhmut became some kind of endless pit which absorbs the lives of Russian soldiers. And it has already been confirmed by the statistics that this settlement is the place where the number of Russian forces deplete faster than anywhere else. But nevertheless, Russia still keeps trying. And we have another, and most likely the most probable reason, is that Russia simply likes symbolic victories. And because of this, they might frequently forget about plain and simple common sense. 
Russia needs these individual victories so that they can push these images and ideology to the regular people, and especially to future conscripts. And because of this, the overall picture and goals of this war are quite often forgotten. Which, by the way, is a good thing for Ukraine. We might see some significant combat activity around Bakhmut in the near future, and if you don't want to miss any of this, just once again, please subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click. And if you want to support my work, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link, or become my Patreon, where you will get early access to the additional content. All the other useful links can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow.